During the period of the late 1800s to the early 1900s, technological advancements were everywhere, and World War I further increased the demand and acceleration of these developments. Today, we are going to go over 12 of the technological advancements made in this time period. Number 1. The Telephone In 1876, the first telephone was invented and tested by Alexander Graham Bell in Brantford, Ontario. In 1880, the Dominion Telegraph Company got a license to use Bell's telephone patent for five years, but the inability to raise the full $100,000 requested by Bell meant that the license was sent to the Bell Telephone Company of Boston instead. However, in Canada, the telephone was popularized greatly in the 1900s. With Canada's booming population, the popularity of the telephone was inevitable. From 1901 to 1911, 250,000 to 300,000 people began using telephones. Many telephone companies started offering innovative services such as wake-up calls to attract customers to use their network. Telephone operators had very dismal and undesirable working conditions. Around the year 1900, a telephone operator would earn only $25 a month, working usually 12 hours a day, 7 days a week. Not only did they have to operate the communications, but they also had to clean the operating room and maintain the furnace during the winter. After a year of working as a telephone operator, they could get a raise of $30 a month but that was still measly compared to other jobs at the time. Number 2. Motion Pictures In 1896, the first public screening of a motion picture took place. Citizens could pay 10 cents to watch short, one-minute films of people doing everyday things. Still, it was quite a marvel for its time. It was quickly recognized as the first form of mass entertainment, as audiences could gather in theaters and watch the films put on there. Motion pictures, now known as movies, are still common entertainment today, and theaters are in almost every city. Number 3. The Airship In 1890, Ferdinand von Zeppelin conceptualized the first airship, and in 1898, it was realized with the creation of the LZ-1 airship. Zeppelin viewed the airship as a primarily military device, but he wasn't very successful with the Army and Navy. In 1913, the crash of the L-1, also known as the LZ-14, caused the death of 14 men, the first deaths in any Zeppelin accident. This deepened the distrust of using it in war. Zeppelins were metal framed and filled with hydrogen, allowing them to float high above the air. They were the first to introduce strategic bombings, which were targeted airstrikes, and they were able to fly higher, farther, and carry more than airplanes. However, due to their size, they had to fly at night and high in the sky to avoid being shot down by artillery. Zeppelins were also used to counter U-boats, because while submarines were nearly invisible while on the water, they were relatively visible from in the air. Number 4. The Modern Flamethrower The concept of a flamethrower can be seen throughout history and isn't something new. However, the modern adaptation of the flamethrower was submitted to the German army by Richard Feitler. They were tested by the Germans in 1911, but their true potential of collateral damage wasn't realized until the introduction of trench warfare. The first instance of use of flamethrowers in World War I was in the Verdun in February 1915. It was later also used in the Battle of Passchendaele in 1917 to horrific effect. Flamethrowers were very effective because of how much they could do. They could easily neutralize enemies holed up in cover without as much structural damage as a grenade. Furthermore, those who survived and fled would be living with permanent images of their comrades being incinerated and burnt alive, leaving many with PTSD. Number 5. The Car The automobile was first introduced to Canada in 1901. It had already existed in the US, called the Oldsmobile, and when it came to Canada, not much changed. Canadian vehicles were considered hybrids because they used a Canadian-made chassis but used American engines. In 1908, PEI banned the use of automobiles on their streets due to complaints that they disturbed children and animals. This was later repealed in 1913, but not every city fully removed the ban until 1919. Given the increasing size of Vancouver, it's no surprise the automobile caught on quickly there. Because of this, the first gas station in Canada was built in Vancouver in 1901. Number 6. The Wireless Radio in 1902, Guglielmo Marconi receives the first wireless telegraph communication from Britain at Signal Hill. From that day on, the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company was formed, and it established permanent communication across the Atlantic. Wireless radios were quickly adapted to be used on boats because of its reception over water. After its use on the Titanic, which sent out a distress signal that saved over 700 lives, it became widely adopted. In the years that followed, 
radio broadcasts of voice were also becoming popularized. Number 7. The Early Airplane The first successful plane flight in Canada took place in 1909. J.A.D. McCurdy flew the silver dart 10 meters above the ground for around a kilometer, going at the speed of 30 kilometers an hour. Early airplanes were made using wire, bamboo, and fabrics. Planes would often get into accidents and when those happened, pilots mostly did their own repairs. In World War I, the plane was used for scouting and was later attached with a machine gun in 1915. Early attempts with this were unsuccessful. The first attempt involved tying a machine gun to the bottom of the plane, facing downwards, and it was operated by a dedicated gunner. It was very inefficient because it required two people to operate. A solution that followed mounted the machine gun above the propellers, high above the pilot. The problem with this, though, was that it was hard to aim. Finally, in 1915, Franz Schneider designs and patents the interrupter gear, which was then developed and released by Anthony Folker. Number 8. Submarines or U-boats Submarines, called U-boats, were developed in early 1914 during the beginning of the World War. They were used to destroy shipping boats from the enemy forces. Originally, they had to give notice to the ships that they were sinking by poking above the water so the people aboard could choose to abandon ship. However, Britain soon began trying to bait out U-boats and had weapons mounted to the underside so they could sink the U-boat. In response to this, Germany stopped giving passengers a chance to escape, and in February of 1917, they began sinking neutral ships, a large part of the USA's entry into the war. By April 1917, 430 Allied ships and neutral ships were sunk. In 1918, the Treaty of Versailles prevented Germany from owning any more U-boats as well as restricting the creation of the boat. In 1935, Germany rejected these terms and started remaking U-boats, which were later used in World War II. Number 9. The Machine Gun Machine guns shaped the history of warfare and heavily changed the way war was fought. The machine gun was introduced to the war in 1914 and from then on, their absolute destructive power was realized. Early machine guns could fire about 400 to 500 rounds per minute, making them very effective defensive weapons. The water-cooled Vickers gun could sustain fire because the water allowed it to heat up slower. Trenches were lined with machine guns, which essentially made infantry attacks in no man's land futile. The fire rate of the machine gun meant that anyone who tried to face it would be mowed down almost instantly. Number 10. The Tank 1915 marked the introduction of the first tank in military warfare. They were based around the normal automobiles, but had armored sides, treads on the wheels, and artillery attached to the front. The classic tank design we see today, with the top side turret, was developed by the French, called the Renault FT. Germans didn't own many tanks, having only 21 of the A7V model tanks. Tanks were used in the Battle of the Somme in 1916 and were utilized as shields against machine guns when, while infantry could move up behind them. Early tanks suffered from excess heat and were noisy and unwieldy. They also experienced many malfunctions on the battlefield. Tanks were later used in World War II to a much greater effect. Number 11. Poison Gas In 1915, rows upon rows of Canadian, French, and British soldiers were faced with a new threat, chlorine gas, previously banned from modern warfare. Many suffocated or fled, leaving the last line to the Canadian forces. The first attempt of at the use of poison gas wasn't actually at Ypres, though. The Germans first introduced poison gas in World War I against the Russians. However, due to the cold weather of the northern front, the canisters of gas froze, rendering them almost useless. The Germans weren't the only ones who began using chlorine gas, however. The Allies started utilizing chlorine gas as well. The introduction of the gas mask lowered the threat of chemical weapons, not completely removing it, but making the chemical weapon attack not as potent as it used to be. Number 12. The Interrupter Gear the interrupter gear, or synchronization gear, was unveiled on July 1st, 1915. Anthony Folker showed the world his creation, based on a patent by Franz Schneider, which fixed the issue of machine guns on aircraft. The interrupter gear uses an attachment to the propeller, which acts as a detector. When this device detects that the propeller is going to be in front of the machine gun, it disengages the trigger of the machine gun, interrupting the pattern of fire, hence interrupter gear. The introduction of jet engines soon made these irrelevant, but for its time, it was widely used for dogfighting and aerial combat. Some sources also state that Franz Snyder pursued a lawsuit against Volker for stealing his patent. Overall, this time period was full of technological advancements and improvements, as you can tell, and it really helped shape the world today. Anyways, this was Andy, that was the video, and remember, we do history in HD. Thanks for watching.